I'm Shemuzo, this is Nitro, and welcome to Viewer Takeover. <laughs> This is Viewer Takeover. We film every single Monday night, and we bring it to YouTube every single Tuesday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday afternoon, Thursday. I don't know. Sometimes you just never know. I got a top twenty-five list to edit, so this might never even air. Uh, whoa! I like the I like the antics. It's very. Oh, I was. I, I ended up accidentally dabbing, and I shouldn't be dabbing. I don't know. <laughs> leave that for the children in um, fortnite yeah my name is brian powell from this channel right here psvr without parole and this guy to my right is dave from dave station vr Ta-da. hello good sir and the guy to his right aj from playstation vr underground underground what's up who's a good ground who's a good waiting for it waiting for a copyright lawsuit about that name oh any, any day now nah. any day now nah. yeah nah. yep yeah, it's gonna yep yeah, it's absolutely so I think we got a bunch of people to thank. Don't you guys think we got a bunch of people to thank? First of all, like we, oh, we want to make sure we thank Shen Muso and Nitro. Well, Meow Meow Nitro for that Nitro. awesome viewer takeover introduction. Uh, not Shen Muso's first visit to the viewer takeover intro. Gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. Yeah. This, exa- love Shen. this is exactly what we want to see for viewer takeover intros. We want to see your face. We want to see your cat if you've got one. And uh, we want you to be like, hey, what's up? My name is blah, blah, blah. Welcome to viewer takeover. Short, simple, to the point. Love it. Love it. Fun fact: Shen Muso is in Shen Muso three. I I was gonna say that actually. He's in yeah Shen Muso three. He's a little uh, gotcha. Shen Muso three. Sorry. Yeah. I knew there was something different about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we also I also want to take this time right here to thank everybody after last week's viewer takeover intro that we saw Carlos the cat. Dave's cat introduced the show, and I was basically like, "Listen, guys, we had to make our own viewer takeover intro. Fucking get your shit together and send us some intros." Uh, you came out in, in droves, man. I have my inbox is full of viewer takeover intros. So if you sent me an intro this week, thank you very, very much. Uh, but, but do it, continue to send them in because it, these weeks run out. Time goes by. Time we goes will go by. More. Please continue to send them in. But I just want to let you know that if you sent one in this week and you're in four or five weeks go by and you still haven't seen yours, I think I got like six in one week. So uh, just keep in mind, it might be like a month and a half until you see yours. You guys rock, man. You really do. Thank yeah, you so thank much. You we love you all. Uh, but if you have an intro to send, please make, keep it short. Keep it simple. Keep it sexy. Send it to without parole <laughs> at gmail.com. But those are not the only people we want to thank. We also want to thank... Oop, these people down here, which I was going these down. Guys? These guys? These guys? These guys? Those guys? These jokers. These guys. Yes. Those are the coolest yeah. of the cool cats, man. All the people who went to patreon.com slash without parole. Games. And they give us a dollar or more every single month. Uh, let you guys know this channel is run almost 100% on Patreon support. A little bit of YouTube ad revenue thrown in there. Um, but we really appreciate any help you can give. Uh, we only ask for a dollar a month. More than that is amazing. Less than that is. Well, we can't. We actually can't take less than that. I think that's how Patreon works. But you get your name on this list down here, and you also get access to Litterbox episodes where Jeremy and I shoot the shit as if there wasn't enough without parole content every single week. It's ridiculous. But that's not the only people we want to thank now, is it, Brian? Who else? Mm-hmm. Who else is there? Who else do we want to thank? We AJ? would like to thank those who change their name to something GameCat, something hashtag GameCat, something GameCat adjacent, as you like to say, what? and they can let us know they change their name. By leaving a comment on any single video, mm-hmm. except for a live stream comment, yep. saying hashtag GameCat. Okay. And this week, we've got three new GameCats to welcome into the GameCat Dojo. <laughs> Starting Ooh. with, I guess, I guess Ryan, uh, he, he figured out how to change his name uh, on YouTube because yep. we've got Joe Grover, Ooh. the effing GameCat. There we go. Send Joe Grover right over. Nothing, nothing Grover. like GameCats with attitude. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, right. I, I like it. I like it. He's he's probably all pissed off because he tried so many times and couldn't get it. <laughs> happy, but okay. Joe is obviously a, a great supporter of the channel. Joe, please, please, please send a message to Robert Sullivan and teach him how to change his name because I know that Robert <laughs> also had an issue changing his name. So, let the instructions commence. Who else we have? We have somebody who's just in time for Spuds Unearthed. Ooh. Is that the name coming out? Spuds the game coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this week, and it, we've got Spud Inski, the game cat. Spud Inski, all right. Spud Inski. Wow. What, what is Spud Inski? No clue. Spud Inski. Spud Inski. Can't explain it. 
Like, yeah. I, not a Spudnik I, reference. I, I almost feel like it's Sputnik. a... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I can't remember. It sounds familiar. Maybe but... he was just cursed with a really bad name. Maybe that's his real birth name, Spud in Spud. Is Spud is <laughs> is, up, is Spud? Spud's McKenzie a thing? Is that the Budweiser dog? I think so. No, what that that was a different name. That was not Spud's McKenzie. Shit. I don't know. I was too um, young for alcohol references at the time. I don't remember the Budweiser dog. I remember Budweiser frogs, actually. <laughs> that was way later. The sitting on that log, yeah. Budweiser. Yep. Uh, so finally, finally <laughs> we have someone who left a hilarious comment on last week's viewer takeover and said, Dave, Carlos is not a, a, a cat's name. And that's because his name that's is true. Carlos Paroli, the game oh. cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Carlos. That's the name he had when I got him and I didn't feel comfortable changing it. It's a it. great name. It is weird when when animals have people names, in my opinion. But yeah, oh, I mean, I did name works. my my own rat Karen. So, did you know this it was Karen before, that you weren't? I'm a fan? very sorry to any Karens. No, I just well. So hey, no, I mean she was a great cat. She's very intelligent, very loving, good cat or rat. I mean, I said cat, but I meant rat. He's oh, a rat. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, yeah, they don't live that long. It's like two years. Here's here's what I like about Carlos and in Joe actually. I bullied both of them into changing their name. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, it's like I, you, like it's yeah. not a cat. It's not a. Uh, cat's name and then you're like well you need to change your name <laughs> right you show that get what's yeah. up <laughs> anyway uh so thank you guys for changing your name as aj already said uh you know game cats are the loyal following without parole hashtag game cat in the comments if you change your name to game cat robert sullivan we're coming for you robert sullivan the game cat just looks beautiful in my head uh so we can give you a shout out next week's show all right but the thing we really do on this show no, no one really knows we answer your questions sometimes we answer them mm. from the discord server Click that link in the description. Join our Discord server and leave your viewer takeover question in the hashtag viewer takeover channel or on any video. You can just type hashtag viewer takeover, leave a comment, all one word, and then leave your comment there. I don't know. There's all sorts of ways you can guess our question, guess questions. The first one comes to us from Nerd, I guess, Silent K on Discord. Nerd, yeah. Or um, it could be K Nerd. It could be K Nerd. Really, the special K. Could be, he could be in a K hole as he's typing this right now. Mm -hmm. He said, "I had to stop playing Dream Match Tennis because I would lose my real self. I would always crash in the walls and bookcases in my room. I think he has too many bookcases in his room. What <laughs> can, you, can you just picture? He's got like seven, like right in front of him. Um, I'm picturing like a in a library when one falls over and the rest of them start toppling. The domino effect. Yeah. What games have made you completely forget your surroundings and made you fall or crash into things? Hashtag viewer takeover like a goddamn motherfucking pro. Mm. what games i gentlemen? love this question so as anybody that knows me knows i don't get motion sickness i don't get like vertigo and stuff um but there is one game and one instance that ever something happened to me like this and it was to the top i was okay. playing with all the game cats and i think our mate was there too one of the developers um because we used to do to the top tuesdays every tuesday night we would all play to the top multiplayer together awesome time they still do it from time to time as well um but there are you know for anyone who doesn't know to the top you bounce around with like little paws like it's like a lot of pouncing and bouncing and parkour and and uh climbing and stuff like that and there's a certain level with like these little trampoline like they look like um these little spring boxes that mario used to jump on and every time you grab them you go boonk boonk and you go flying up high. And for some reason, just that day, that was the very first time where I literally like went boink and I looked down and it made me fall backwards. But luckily there was a chair right behind me. So I, I fell right on my ass, uh, but, it, but it was right into my couch. So it was fine. I was safe. But that is uh, the only time I've ever like where shit got too real and I fell over. You should be thankful you were not surrounded by bookshelves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Not gonna find many of those here. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you got right. one in mind? So I'm I can't think of one that's made me like hit walls or the TV. Because a lot of people talk about like super hot, they broke their TV, or Creed, they punched a hole in their TV or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That hasn't happened to me. But I have had a tendency. There's two that pop into mind. Um when I'm waiting in firewall matches in the lobby, I have a tendency to start playing with my aim controller and like doing this like throwing it up in the air in a circle and catching it thing mm -hmm. with a, a mask on my face where I can't see anything. So inevitably that hits stuff. Right. And um, 
sometimes we have a few drinks when we're playing, you know. Um, so I've knocked over all kinds of shit just chucking my aim controller up in the air for no reason. Um, and then in Beat Saber, sometimes I'll just like forget where my chair is at or like something that I might hit and I'll just slam my hand into it like full force. And I'm like, ah, fuck. But that's about it. Yeah, I can't say I've, I've had like a lot of these experiences, you know, like you were just saying, Dave, we hear about crazy ass things. We've seen broken TVs. We've seen all sorts of things. Um, but the more I thought about this, the more I realized that early on, I mean, Super Hot VR was a pretty early game. Um, and so I didn't I guess, I mean, I, I you know, like, like AJ said, I've never really dealt with motion sickness. Um, but I guess early on, I did have a tendency to sort of forget where I was. And so with with uh, super hot specifically, uh, you you I always found myself getting into like sort of precarious positions. Where it's like, oh, there's a bullet coming here, and so I had to basically get down on my knees and you know almost matrix it, and uh, and then and then while I'm kind of balancing myself, you know, you're staying crouched just to make sure that nothing is coming your way. There be there would be things like you know like bars or chairs or tables and things in VR where like if you're crouching, you would think I I should sort of. <laughs> like hold myself up with this thing and i certainly uh more than once in super hot tried to hold myself up with a table or a bar or something that wasn't there and definitely stumbled a little bit i never had any crazy accidents or anything um i think i find that ridiculous and over the top and i love yeah. seeing shit like that if but, you do I mean, want a crazy I'm... accident my roommate my former roommate uh broke his tv by playing drunken bar fight and i kept telling him to stay back oh what back. a waste and what a fucking kept, waste know, too right? all, all games. Like, games if you if you broke it playing creed or super hot at least you're playing a good game yeah. well he wasn't listening to because i kept telling him to be careful be careful and then he kept going forward and going forward and he punched his tv and then he freaked out and he bear hugged his tv and then he just fell straight backwards and then like uh oh. and then his tv went fell flat on his face and cracked um, holy so, shit that's quite yeah. a series of events yeah and he <laughs> was like i don't like vr and i'm like well that's because you're a fucking moron <laughs> i'm just glad yeah. it wasn't your tv <laughs> for yes, sure me too yeah. absolutely no i had a friend who was playing windlands one time and he got to a part where like you know occasionally you'll you'll get stuck on something and your guy kind of goes like whoa, 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 really fast i'll take your word for you're that. kind of like bouncing back and forth if you're holding on to a thing and you got a short leash and you're bouncing off a side your guy will go bum 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 uh, which is a weird feeling, I guess. And he almost fell over in front of me. He's a very tall guy, too. He probably would have fell and hit the TV. Um, but he started, like, wobbling, and I had to grab him because he was yeah. fucked up his equilibrium. Always guy. always be around people. Practice safety and yeah. make sure uh, make sure there's all the objects out of the way, especially with new, new people in VR that you're trying to show. And, yeah, just be ready because they don't always listen. Yeah, don't put your grandpa in Richie's plank experience if there's anything <laughs> around breakable. I, I forget what I was streaming recently. Um, it couldn't have been anything crazy because I haven't been playing anything crazy during live streams. But I, oh, you know what? It was it was drunken bar fight where like I wasn't doing anything crazy. I didn't feel like I was you know making any crazy like sh stretching my arms out really far motions or anything. And uh, and and the way I have my streaming set up uh, for the channel is that I've got my couch, and on the arm of my couch sits my laptop. It's the only place that it can possibly be. Um, and, but it's never a problem. It's, it's way out of arm range. It's never an issue. That thing went fucking flying during the stream. Like, I, 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 I hit it, <laughs> it. It did a flip. It landed on the ground. Stream didn't stop. Everything was fine. It's like, wow. It's all right. Resilient, if nothing else. Gonna keep going. Yeah. So that, that was strange for me. That, that almost never happens. All right. Uh, be sure to let us know. And if you guys have any crazy stories or anything similar happened to you, let us know in the comments down below. The next question comes from Perfect VR's favorite number one fan, Jay Meow from the Discord. Writes hashtag viewer takeover like a pro. Says, What PSVR game that you were expected to be bad turned out really good? I I'm going to start with the most obvious one here. We waited so long for Golem. We, I mean, that was yeah. that was one of the first, yeah. if not the first, announced PlayStation VR game, and we just saw the same trailer over and over and over and over for about four years, maybe five, uh, and then it finally we're like, like, oh, it's coming out, and we're like, you are so full of shit. <laughs> like there is no way that like this you managed to cobble together some kind of semblance of a game, and and, and it's going to be any good, right? Why haven't you shown anything for years? Uh, and then we all played it, and it was it was amazing. It was it was 
quite we didn't think it was going to come out let alone be any good (laughs) absolutely not absolutely not and then we get this like super high quality soundtrack and amazing amazing introductions and then when it turns out that that the actual gameplay we didn't know what the gameplay was going to be like until we actually got our hands on it we had no idea it was going to be a melee sword combat game no and and the fact that that's what it was and that the melee combat turned out to be amazing and like the best uh sword fighting we have in vr I mean that was right. just, that was mind blowing. That was absolutely mind blowing. Amazing uh, graphics, soundtrack, all yeah, that. That that one definitely took me by surprise. How about you guys? I'm gonna go with a recent one, um, and it's not like the greatest game in the world, but I thought it was gonna be shovelware junk. Honestly, uh, Good Goliath, because when you watch the first stage, if you just glance at it, you're gonna think, okay, this is a wave shooter, and I've seen so many goddamn wave shooters. <laughs> yeah. And it just like it didn't grab me in any way. And I thought it's another one of those games that we already have too many of on the system and throwing sucks in PSVR for the most part anyways. So like I wasn't too excited, Um, but it turns out it's actually for whatever reason, fairly fun and and pretty satisfying to play. So worth a shot, at least. I mean, I was going to I was expecting to pan it, but uh, I liked it. I had a good time. Yeah. Um I am ashamed to say that I, when I first heard about Zing, the land beyond, I literally could give two shits less about it. Like yeah. I was, I was like, well, it's been out on PC forever. Nobody's talking about it. Um, I was like, it's a puzzle game, um, you know, and I didn't think there was, I thought the name was weird and I thought there was like nothing I was going to like about it. Oh, well, by the way, it turns out it's one of my favorite puzzle mm-hmm. games of all time. Um, and coming and, from a guy like you who loves puzzle games, I mean that says a lot. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, I I know all of them, but <laughs> but no, I mean just the beautiful world. I've I go I say it again and again. You know, the world is beautiful. The puzzles were so challenging at times, but they were so creative and just. There's a lot of like mesmerizing stuff about that game. There's there's like Northern Lights in the game that is just beautiful and. Just stuff you have to see in VR to really appreciate. It is just gorgeous. Just wait till you hear what I have to say about it in the top twenty-five. This oh week. yeah, I can't wait. I, had, I, I said that. very, very nice things. I really it. hope you mentioned Donkey Kong music. I didn't mention Donkey Kong music. I'm well, sorry. Then <laughs> I'm less excited, but we need an has, appendix on the screen. It has Donkey Kong a little... country music in it as well. For okay. those who didn't know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. that is like another five points for me. But, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll agree with you on that one big time that was we had no expectations for that whatsoever that was another one that seemed like it had been in development forever and then they just went silent I'm like is this thing still in existence yeah uh, and then it disappeared yeah and it just seemed too ambitious it just seemed like way like way too ambitious for playstation vr and it was and then when we finally found out it was only made by three people over the course of six years that made even less sense like how did this yeah. even happen this was magic yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we were certainly blessed by that one. Yeah, it's over 10 hours long. It's it's essentially to me, I consider it like almost a triple A quality game yeah. in terms of like the detail and everything. Yeah, I think I called it a small miracle in, in my blurb for the top 25 because it really is the fact that three guys made this game. That's insane. Like, how can you how can you picture that in your head? Yeah, it's so beautiful. Like, it's really well made. Indeed. It's a wonderful game. Go out and get it. And the final question comes to us, AJ. AJ already read one. It's my final question comes to us, Dave. (laughs) I don't want to read no more. You can say Orsik because you you have a a way that you say Orsik. So let's introduce Orsik. Well, this one comes via Orsik. Orsik. The Game Cat from Discord. (laughs) He says, hashtag viewer takeover. I can't get tired of exploring caves by the sole light of a torch. I would move my arm left, right, up, down like in movies left right left right okay what are your favorite vr moments guys well or seek i really really hope you've played the solace project because that has some of not only the most amazing moments but in caves with torches in your hand and and it feels like a mix between at times like tomb raider or indiana jones You've got your torch in one hand and you're walking through these caves and there's like alien, uh, like, what is it? Um, alien, like, like sculptures and all this different stuff. Um, and 
Uh, yeah, one of my favorite moments from that game, besides randomly walking across um, – there's, there's so many surprises in that game, and I don't want to spoil some of the best ones, but one of the smaller ones I will um, is that there's these sea urchin creatures. And, like, so as you're exploring the caves, you hear this, like, eh, or something. That was a really bad attempt. But you hear this, like, high-pitched, like, squeal, and then they just, like, roll away. Um, and there's also uh-huh. moments where these alien, these distorted alien transmissions start coming through on your radio and uh yeah they they make these just god awful noises and it is one of the most shocking games i've ever played in my life it's one of my favorite psvr games yeah i'm going to i'm i'm going to kind of go along with the torch deal um and i i don't know if he's uh is he saying torch like an actual torch or is he or are they referring to a torch like a, a flashlight oh i don't know um, I've, I guess some people call a flashlight a torch. They do but, indeed, and, I'm, and so I'm. But I think, pretend. but I think the fact that he's saying he's moving his arm all over the place, like in movies, yeah. seems more like a, an actual yeah. torch, right? You know, well, I'm going to go right in line with what he's saying because I, whenever I find a flashlight in a VR game, I'm so happy. Um, you know, most recently, Free Diver, I think, uh, as you as you're kind of like moving around that environment, whether you're swimming or whether you're actually just crawling around. Uh, you know, pulling yourself from place to place. I'm always trying to like use the flashlight at the same time, just to right. add to my um, enjoyment of the look of the game. Even, you know, even if I'm not streaming, even if I'm not capturing footage for review, I just do it for myself because I just love the way flashlights work and respond and look in VR. Um, so that, that specifically, anytime I get a flashlight, and I always judge games based on the quality of the flashlight. You know, you get super crazy fucking bright ones, like in a um, blind spot. It thinks like a like twelve LED lights just <laughs> right, just like assaulting your eyes. Yeah. And then uh, what was I just playing? Uh, where uh, f- fuck? What was I just just playing? Oh, Red Matter. I was just playing Red Matter, and you you actually the trigger is actually uh, sensitive, right. right? So you can actually increase the the power of the flashlight. Um, but still, even at full power, I'm like, oh, I wish this thing was just a little bit brighter, like holding it down the whole time. Um, I don't know. I just love how different flashlights work in VR. I love that. All right. Um, I think mine is more specific to a game because I haven't seen too many games do this. Um, Astrobot had a few moments in it that have <gasps> stuck with me forever where they play with the idea of you as an, like a third person observer, but you're embodied. Mm-hmm. So like you walk through um, vines coming down and then you have or it's like seaweed or something. Yeah. And then you have a seaweed hat and you can shake it around and it's in front of your eyes. And there's these moments where like, as you're passing through foliage, it bends around your face. And like the first time you go underwater in Astrobot, when the wave rises up oh, and so- your view goes under and then it comes back down. Those moments are really that stuck out to me. It's like one of the coolest ways to do a game like that and i haven't I, seen it very often but i'll never forget those those astrobot moments that's a great pick i actually thought you were going to mention the part in astrobot that actually has a flashlight it's like the spooky <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. luigi's yeah, yeah. mansion looking mm-hmm. castle level and uh you have to use the flashlight to see the blocks and the path to run on so you're having to shine the flashlight and have uh ash and control astro yeah. like running yeah. across the platforms that was one of my favorite uh, moments in that game, for sure. The, the other great so thing, many. the other great thing in general, is just anytime you're able to pick things up and throw them. Like that was like such an early thing for me, where it's like, oh, there's something on the shelf. Oh, I can pick it up. Oh, I can just fucking throw it. And that might be something you can do in any game. Uh, but but VR takes it to that next level with the move controllers. We're actually reaching out. You're actually throwing it. And and if it breaks a hundred times better you know even a crappy mm-hmm. game i'm gonna say crappy game like paper dolls which i actually really like despite the fact That's that crazy. it's that that locomotion system is god awful and it's the darkest game in the world um you it's can no uh it's no sharknado locomotion but it, it's no sharknado it's but no it's sharknado just, yeah. i would i would to- i would totally take sharknado locomotion in paper dolls because <laughs> it's still better maybe it's still yeah. better yep mm. Um, but yeah, because, but even that game, like it's you pick up these giant vases and you just throw them to the ground and, and they and they break into a million pieces and you're like that's so satisfying. Like it doesn't matter what game it is, it just it just always feels good. Um, so I judge games by that too. It's like if I walk around in the game and I can't pick something up and break it, throw it, I'm like what do you, what 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 are we even doing here? 
I could almost go through. That's one of my favorite things about VR, man, is I could almost go through almost every single game and name you a favorite VR moment. Um, the list, you know, the list just goes on and on. The inpatient. On. How about yeah. the inpatient? No, I'm not really. Okay. I mean, I, I can. I just, I, wanted to, I just wanted to prove you wrong, real quick. No, no, no. There, there, oh, okay. there is there is a moment in the inpatient which I'm not going to spoil. Well, there is one, but but yeah. it, but it was it's it. I I was so I was one. terrified to scare to turn around because because of something yeah. you see in front of you, you realize that there's probably something right behind you, and yeah. and, and you you turn around and it's like, yep, there it was, and it was fucking awful. <laughs> but it, yeah. But yeah, that was an amazing. It was an amazing oh. moment, almost worth the price of admission alone when it's on almost. sale for like ten bucks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or under, or under for sure. All right, you guys, uh, that was uh, I, th- I think that was it for viewer takeover. Uh, so make That's sure a you... quick one. Here's a quick one. Hey, hey, in so... a relatively short Fine. amount of time. You know, sometimes we go on for an hour, and so we have to have these shorter ones to make up for it. Because yeah. editing hell those hour long ones. I'll tell you that. And plus, that top twenty list ain't gonna edit itself. Oh, yeah. That's true. All right, you guys, so let's do that quick uh, rundown of everything. Make sure you send us your viewer takeover introduction to withoutparole at gmail.com. Keep it short, keep it simple, keep it sexy. Uh, also, <laughs> change your name to GameCat and let us know in the comments below by typing hashtag GameCat, all one word, in the comment, and then we will give you a shout out on next week's show. Also, head on over to patreon.com slash without parole. Games. Games. Hook us up with a dollar or more every month if you're able to. We understand that this is a hard time for everybody. If you can't do it, don't worry. If you can, we thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Make sure you subscribe to Dave over at Dave Station VR. Make sure you subscribe to AJ over at PSVR Underground. Thank you so much for watching Viewer Takeover. My name is Brian Paul, and we're out. So, so Dave. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> so Dave. You wanna have a staring contest, Dave? You win. I blinked. Damn it. He's so good at these. He's so good. He's so good. Doesn't, doesn't even crack I'm a smile. Find your secret. No, I'm gonna find your secret one day, Dave. One of these days I'm going to I'm going to beat you in these staring contests.